Raw Maths Challenge number 4. For more information about these challenges, watch the beginning of the first one. The basics are you're not allowed any calculating devices or measuring implements such as rulers and protractors. All you should need is a pencil and a piece of paper. Pause the video now and have a go at these questions. OK, let's get started with the junior warm-up. We have a uh, square based pyramid, which looks like this, that's had the top chopped off and the, the corners chopped off. So how many edges does it have? So we've got, in a, in a normal pyramid we have four across the top and four on the bottom, so that's eight. And then we've got four more on the top and then on each corner there is three more so there are four of those corners because it's square on the base so we've got four lots of three on the bottom so that's 12 plus 8 is 20 plus 4 is 24 okay the intermediate warm-up which of the following straight lines cuts the shaded area in half well let's work out the area of the shaded area first this side here is 5 and this side is 7 so the whole rectangle has an area of 35. This triangle here is 4 by 5, so that's 4 times 5, which is 20, halved is 10. So this area in here is 10, so the shaded area is 35, take away 10, which is 25. Now we need to figure out what line we need to draw to break this in half. So half of 25 would be 12 and a half. So we need to get 12 and a half on each side. So um, if I just chop off this rectangle here, that's five squares gone. So I need to make a triangle with an area of seven and a half. And as this side is five, uh, if I call out the base and half it, it's two and a half. It needs to be three high because three lots of two and a half makes seven and a half. So that's where you would chop it along the line DX or XD which is D. Senior warm-up. Diagram shows two squares, one of length one, so this is all one around the outside and this is three uh, which have the same center corresponding sides are parallel. What fraction of the largest square is shaded? So the largest square has an area of nine because three times three is nine and uh, if we figure out how much is shaded, if I chop this bigger square in half, that would be four and a half, but there's this little bit missing here, which is half of one square. So half of this would be four and a half, minus a half is four. So the area of the shaded bit is four out of nine, the total, so four ninths is A. Junior trick C from last week's math challenge. Math challenge number three. Okay, we are told that A times B equals two, B times C equals 24, and C times A equals three. Now there is a clever way of solving this one. Let's just try and do it the brute force way. They are all positive. As soon as I see that, I'm thinking, it's not saying they're whole numbers. So they're not saying integers, so maybe they're not whole numbers. Let's just try some value. So, Something times something is 2, so let's try 1 times 2. And then B would be 2, C would have to be 12. And then we'd have 12 times 1, well that's not equal to 3, so that doesn't work. Um, thinking about them not being integers, um, I would. my second guess would be to go, oh, half times 4 is 2, and 4 times 6 is 24 and 6 times a half does actually happen to make 3. So that we know A is a half, B is 4, and C is 6, so that would make 10 and a half. Okay, now that requires a little bit of luck to solve it that way, but if we actually looked at what we had here, A times B, and if we times that by B times C, and we times that by C times A, that would give us 2 times 24 times 3, and uh, 224 is a 48, and 48 times 3 equals 144. Okay, and we've got two a's, we've got a squared, and we've got b squared, and we've got c squared. 
So that would tell us that A, B, C has got to be equal to 12. Because the square root of that is square root of that, and that would be 12. So if A, B, C equals 12, then we know A times B is 2. So A times B is 2. So 2 times C equals 12. So that means C equals 6. And once we have C equals 6, then we can work out that B equals 4, and then A equals a half. And we get the same answer as before, 10 and a half. Intermediate trick C from Raw Math Challenge number 3. OK, we've got um, a cuboid that's been chopped in, chopped up so the middles are missing from each of the sides. So if we just try and draw a representation of this cuboid, it's 3 by 4 by 5. OK, it's a very poor drawing, but that will do. OK, so it's got the middles missing from each of the sides. So if we have this as 3 by 5, and although it doesn't look like it, we'll have this as 4. So we've got to count what fraction of the original cuboid remains. So if we put, cut it into slices, so we just slice off the front section and the back section, they're going to be exactly the same. And then this middle section is just going to be made up of two lots of four cubes. Um, you've got one two, three, and then the one under here, four, five, six, seven, and the one under there, eight. So eight in the middle. The front section is going to be 15, take away, one, two, three. We've got that middle section there missing three. So this is going to be 15, take away three, which is 12. And the back is also going to be 12. So we've got 12, eight, and 12. 12 plus 8 plus 12 is going to be 32 and that makes 32 out of 60 and we can cancel that down by dividing by or oh, 4 certainly goes into it 8 over 15 times and that's D Senior Trick C from Raw Mass Challenge number 3 okay we've got to work out um, What's the smallest value of x such that s is a perfect square? So we've got this s, which is a sum of a sequence, it's an arithmetic progression. Now we could use the formula for arithmetic progression, the sum to n to be equal to a half n a plus l, well a is the first term and l is the last term. We don't really need that, um, let's just try and do it without to start with. So if we look at this, how many x's have we got? Well we've got one x for every term in the sequence. And the, the key thing here is to realise there's 81 terms. 20 to 100 is 81 because 21 to 100 would be 80 and the extra one makes 81. So we've got 81 x's and then we've got uh, the numbers 20 added up to 100. And if we're adding the numbers from 20 to 100, there's a little tip here for adding any group of numbers that are consecutive is to flip the numbers round and add that to the original numbers. So we add 20 to 100 to make 120 and we do that and that gives us 120 for every number in the sequence. And as there's 81 of those numbers in the sequence we have 81 lots of 120 but that's double the sequence we want so we have to half that. So we've got 81 times 120 divided by 2 and that's going to be 81 times 60. So we've got 81 times 60 and 81 times x so the total is 81 times x plus 60. Now, um, what is the smallest value of x such that this is a perfect square? Um, initially you might be thinking, well 81 times 81 is a perfect square because this times by itself, but 81 itself is already a perfect square. So uh, so long as, so that's 9 times 9, so long as we have a perfect square here to multiply it by, then we can pair off the two numbers and then we get another perfect square. So as long as this is a perfect square, times by another perfect square you get a perfect square. So um, the smallest number x can be is 4, because 4 plus 60 is 64. And 64 is 8 times 8, and we've got 9 times 9. And that's a perfect square because we have 8 times 9 times 8 times by 9 times 8. And whatever that is, it's a perfect square. So the answer is 4, C. And finally, some new tricksy questions to keep you busy until next time.
please feel free to post your thoughts on the solutions to these questions in the comments section on YouTube. If you found this video interesting, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And if you want to check your answers, subscribe to Raw Maths on YouTube so that you can find out when I post the next video which will have the solutions to these questions. So until next time, good luck.